and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Miss Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we're going to be talking about diabetes insipidus. What is diabetes insipidus? What is the difference between diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus? What are the causes? What are the pathophysiology of diabetes insipidus? And also, what is the nursing diagnosis, the nursing management of diabetes insipidus? By the end of this class, you will be able to answer all these questions correctly. But before we go into details, kindly click on the subscribe button, turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we are going to be talking about what? Diabetes insipidus. What is diabetes insipidus? Diabetes insipidus is a rare disorder that causes the kidney to make too much urine. It is a rare disorder that causes the kidney to make too much urine. The similarity between diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus is the fact that polyuria is present which is too much urine we are passing out was too much urine but diabetes insipidus is not as popular as diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is the common one we see in the hospital when compared to what diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus is rare it's a rare disorder that what that causes the kidney to make too much urine it results from deficiency of ADH in circulation. What is ADH? ADH simply means antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone. These hormones help us reabsorb water back into circulation. When there is now deficiency of ADH, that ADH, that's antidiuretic hormone, we start passing out excessive urine because this fluid, they are not being reabsorbed back into the body. The function of ADH is to help us what reabsorb fluid into the intravascular compartment. But when there is deficiency in ADH, urine, there will be excess what urinary output. What is happening in diabetes? is a deficiency in what antidiuretic hormone or there is antidiuretic hormone but the receptors are not responsive to antidiuretic hormone it's just like insulin is that there is deficiency in insulin or the receptors are not responsive to insulin same way in adh it is either there is deficiency in adh or the receptors are not responsive to ADH. So when there is deficiency in ADH, it results in what? Diabetes insipidus. The these are the major cause. This is the major cause of what diabetes insipidus. Then that takes us to the causes, likely predisposing factor, or things that are likely to bring about deficiency of ADH in the body. The first we have here is head trauma, followed by neurosurgery tumor, meningitis, encephalitis, long-standing renal disease, and also drugs. Looking at it, you can see meningitis and encephalitis, they are, what, they are infections. They are likely going to hinder the production of ADH. Same with head trauma, neurosurgery, and tumor. If you look at it, the major cause that is causing this deficiency, they are relating to the brain. That takes us to the pathophysiology of what? Diabetes insipidus. What, like I really said, what is happening in diabetes insipidus is that there is deficiency of antidiuretic hormone. So this deficiency leads to the reduced water reabsorption. It leads to what reduce water reabsorption. So excess urine takes place, which is what polyuria. And when you are passing out urine, there's excess passage of urine. There's going to be polydipsia, which is increased test. Both polyuria and polydipsia, they are also present in diabetes mellitus. So as a result of polyuria and polydipsia, there will be dehydration as a result of polyuria and polydipsia. 
there will be what? There will be dehydration. This dehydration will lead to hypotension, weakness, fatigue, even tachycardia and sleep disorder, besides the polyuria. Why this polyuria will lead to high serum osmolarity? The serum will be, we have, uh, there will be high osmolarities, like thick, it's no longer dilute. Do you know when something is dilute and when something is concentrated? So our blood will be concentrated rather than the normal range. So sleep disorder can result from polyuria because this person will be going to the toilet to pass out urine. Don't forget what is happening in diabetes insipidus is that there's what? There's deficiency of anti-diuretic hormone which leads to what? Reduced water reabsorption that leads to polyuria which is excessive urine output, polydystia which is excessive taste. So all this leads to the signs and symptoms of what? Diabetes insipidus we see here. That takes us to the management of diabetes insipidus. Things of the nursing management for diabetes insipidus. The first thing you have to take note of is admission and assessment. You admit based on the severity of the case. But assessment is very important. I will always tell you that assessment is of paramount importance when it comes to the management of a patient in nursing. Then the other is observation. You have to observe the vital signs of your patient. You have to know, oh, is the vital, are the vitals normal or abnormal? Then another one is daily weight assessment. You have to weigh this patient daily. And also, you have to monitor the input and output of this patient. It is very, very important. Rest and sleep. You encourage your patient to rest and also get enough sleep. In terms of diet, you have to ensure that your patient take the necessary, the essential nutrient needed for growth and development. Then another is give drugs as prescribed. You have to give the prescribed vasopressin, you have to give the prescribed analgesics, you have to give the prescribed intravenous infusion such as dextrosaline. Then also watch out for side effects of vasopressin. One of the side effects of vasopressin is abdominal cramps. So you have to watch out for the side effect. Physical care is not left out. That is when we talk about oral care, you talk about bed bath of the patient. And also, psychological care should not be left out. This is the time you establish good rapport with your patient. This is the time you communicate effectively with your patient to know what is wrong with that patient at a particular time. From the signs and symptoms, we are able to derive some useful nursing diagnosis related to what diabetes insipidus. The first one we have is deficient fluid volume related to polyuria evidenced by signs of dehydration. You know this patient is passing out urine, excessive urine output. So there will be what deficient fluid volume. That is why you have to give what the prescribed intravenous infusion. Then also disturb sleep pattern. At night, this patient cannot sleep because of urine frequent micturition. So disturbed sleep pattern related to nocturia evidenced by somnia. The another nursing diagnosis we have here is activity intolerance related to weakness, fatigue, evidenced by inability to carry out activities of daily living. We can also have deficient knowledge and also anxiety related to the outcome or cause of this disease evidenced by patients asking too many questions. That takes us to the complication of diabetes insipidus. The first we have is, we have hypertension, heart failure, shock, coma, and death. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Thank you very much for watching our video. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to drop your comments in the question section. That's the comment section. And don't forget to share with a friend if it got value. See you in our next video.